So we're going to look at search again, sort of part two of the search. Uh, and this time we are using a repeating group and doing um, a little bit of filtering uh, on a repeating group uh, to display our results from our search. So what have I got set up here? Let's go to the editor and see. We've got a uh, cert, an input box called search. I've got a couple of icons, one across for cancelling the search for clearing the, the input search box and one here for uh, the magnifying glass for triggering the search off. So when we trigger the search, I've actually got a back-end workflow that just sets the state and sets it to the value of the input search box's value. Um, and when you click the cross, I basically blank the um, custom state um, and then I reset the relevant inputs so that uh, the search box becomes empty again. And then below that, we've got a repeating group, which is going to show our results. Um, at the moment, we're looking at user, type of content is user, and we're just doing a search for user. Um, and this is uh, not visible by default, so you can see it's not visible here. And I've got a conditional, and it says that when um, the custom state search term is not empty, so we've just got something in it, basically when we click this button, it'll get that um, state will get set. So this will be not empty, and then the repeating group will appear. Um, and uh, let's have a look at the search here so we've got a constraint on it and basically we're looking at any fields so bubble has this option and you click in here if you go down the bottom here you've got any field um, that you can use so it's going to search across multi fields across your data type of user uh, and it's going to look for uh, where it contains the search term that we pass to the custom state um, the reason i've done it with custom states is because i can blank it and and uh, and obviously refill it with this piece at the top here um, rather than having it constantly searching when you're as you're typing which can cause delays and um, obviously you as you start to type letters it would be doing a search um, and you don't want it to start search until you've completed whatever you want to search for and then click the button so that's why i've done it as a state uh, it just makes things a bit easier um, all right let's have a look at it and see what it looks like so I'm going to search for, in fact, we're searching for users. I've got a user called Jackie Chan in here. And there we go, it finds it. If I click the cancel button, it blanks it. If I search for, I don't know, Marshall, as in martial arts, it finds me Jackie Chan as well, because it's looking in the description of the users, because it's looking across all fields. Uh, let's Angelina, because I've got Angelina Jolie in here as well. Uh, and there we go, so it works fine, no problems at all. Um, nice, clean, crisp search. Obviously, once I've searched, I could click on the um, person's name and that could run a workflow to take me to that user's profile or, or whatever I want to do. But let's have a look at changing it now to point at a big database of movies. So if you've watched the previous video, you'll have seen that we've got about nearly 8,000 movies in this uh, particular database with description against each of the movies and sort of a movie title. So exactly the same search, no, no change really, just change it to movies and search for movies, looking across all fields. I'll just show you the data set so you can see it. You see 7,000, nearly 7,800, and you've got a movie name and then you've got a description. Um, and thousands of thousands of them there. Right, so let's have a look at that in action. So I'm going to search for Top Gun, click the button. And it hasn't found it. Let's try Top Gun like that. Ah, you know why? I know why. Because we changed this and we haven't changed this. Helps if we do that. That's why it wasn't working. Let's have a go. Okay, so let's try again. There we go, found it. Less than a second, probably, maybe a second. Uh, let's search for I don't know, anything with the word winter in it. And you can see, and it's continuing to find some. It might still find some more as it's kind of searching its way through. Um, if I was to search for, I don't know, Tom Cruise, because he'll be in the description somewhere, then it's going to find me Top Gun again. Um, I don't know, a few good men. Finds me that as well, and anything else that matches. 
if we were to search for kind of war films, then it's going to get me a list of those out. So pretty quick search, works nicely, um, not too much to delay, and that's working across 8,000 records, so no problem at all. I guess the difference between this and the fuzzy search plugin that we used in the last video is that I can't give the search any kind of those parameters to make it more fuzzy or less fuzzy, tokenize and do those type of things. Um, so it's, it's a bit more limited in that way. But as you can see, it kind of works in this use case if I was searching for, you know, um, all war films, but it might pull out something that's not a war film because it happens to have the word, you know, romantic warring partners or something in, in the title somewhere there or in the description somewhere, and it's going to pull out stuff that's not quite relevant. Um, and there's, you know, nothing you can do about that because it's a very simple search. It's just looking for that word in um, in in one of the fields in the database, but works and it works at speed with, with as I say, 8,000 records. Hope that helps.